Let's get perspective now on the Glenn Simpson testimony released today and the surveillance stories. Fox News senior judicial analyst Judge Andrew Napolitano is with us tonight. Judge, good to see you. Brett, likewise. You and I read through this uh, transcript. We should point out the Senate had one that uh, Dianne Feinstein put out. Right. This is the House interview of Glenn Simpson. Correct. A couple of things struck us. Uh, right. One was uh, page 54, uh, Simpson talking to House members. As far as I'm concerned, we are now, as opposed to back then, back then we had what appeared to be credible allegations of some sort of pattern of surreptitious contacts between the Trump campaign and Russian people, either working for the government or acting on behalf of the Russian government, as Chris wrote, referencing Chris Steele. It was, you know, I think a wide-ranging conspiracy was the way he put it. What struck you? about this testimony. Well, a couple of things struck me. First of all, the, the witness does not have personal knowledge of what he's talking about. So he, Glenn Simpson, the head of this company or this unit of this Fusion company, GPS. correct, is recounting what Christopher Steele, the former British spy who actually did the research, told him. So he says, we believed Chris Steele and the FBI believed Chris Steele because we thought this was so incendiary or Chris Steele did that he went to the FBI with it. What did he go to the FBI with? some sort of evidence, which we haven't seen, of a regular but surreptitious communication between agents of the Kremlin and the Trump campaign. Now, I have to believe that Bob Mueller already knows about these allegations and has decided whether the evidence is, uh, is credible uh, or not. The other thing that struck me is there's a lot in there about the president's business dealings from the years before he was president with Russian mobsters and agents of uh, Russian uh, security uh, services, none of which is good for him. And if, if Bob Mueller decides to ask him about this, I don't know how he'd be able to answer it. If it's true. I mean, and right. we don't know, you know, that doesn't break down what the sourcing of all of that is. Correct. However, the allegations are pretty detailed. Uh, one of the things that was brought up in the Senate testimony was that he had said somebody died because of their investigation. Yes. Uh, here, he's asked about that. If a source was killed, he says, I mean, there was a series of episodes where people were arrested or died mysteriously, talking about in Russia. They came shortly after the disclosure of the existence of this information. I do believe there's a bit of old-fashioned purge, but... To my knowledge, it wasn't anyone that helped us. I think it was more likely people who were taking the opportunity to settle scores or were falsely accused. Bottom line, he's walking back right. what he said in the first time. Right. Look, uh, I say this is somebody that likes the president and has known him for years and wants him to succeed. But if there is evidence to substantiate the allegations in this testimony, this is a, a constitutional crisis uh, coming our way. And we'll see where it goes. Obviously, the Mueller investigation, we don't know when it'll end. To that point, uh, the president's lawyer uh, talked to Major Garrett from CBS. Uh, right. Take a listen to some more of this. Is it, from your vantage point right now, Ty Cobb, a virtual certainty that the president will have some Q&A with the special counsel, Robert Mueller? That's my belief. And do you think there is any danger for the president in that encounter? You know, I would hope that uh, a fair-minded um, Office of Special Counsel would approach it um, in, a, in a dutiful way, consistent with precedent, and it wouldn't be a mere perjury trap. And the president is very eager to uh, sit down um, and, and explain whatever of, is responsive to the questions that uh, uh, the very of, eager. Office of Special Counsel. Very eager. He says he's very eager, but you're the president's attorney. Would I, you have him I sit would down? do everything I could to temper that eagerness. There's an old one-liner with which Ty Cobb is familiar. Don't talk to a guy that owns a grand jury because he will find a way to trap you by reading to the grand jury what you told him and comparing it with other evidence. Never, 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 I can't say never enough, uh, let your client sit down with the prosecutors who are trying to develop a case against him. Never expect them to be fair. Never expect them to tell everything that they know. You will never know, and your client, the president, will never know everything that they know about him. It's a recipe for disaster. Well, it'll be interesting to see. Hope Hicks, the communications director, uh, was scheduled to appear, we're told, on the House Intel side, is not going to tomorrow. Uh, we will follow all the elements. Judge, as always, thanks. A pleasure, Brett.